I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm really delighted tonight to welcome Carl Wimmer to our show and to hear your story. Right. Thank uh, you. We appreciate you coming all the way up from Gunnison. Oh, it's good to be here. So Great thanks. job. Yeah. yeah. You were born and raised in the church, right? I was born yeah. and raised in the church. Uh, Family active. Family was think? active. We went to church. Uh, I had a very, very typical uh, Mormon <laughs> childhood. Did you? Yeah. Baptized at eight and the whole business, huh? Yeah. Were baptized. you born in the covenant then? Yes. Your parents? Uh, yes, I was. In the um, temple? And, yep. And uh -huh. Baptized at eight, deacon at 12, teacher at 14, priest at 16, wow. elder, and then married in the temple, married in the Bountiful Temple. Really? Yeah. How was that experience? Was that what you thought it would be when you, all the preparation that goes into that visit? Going through the temple the yeah, first time? Yeah. Uh, I had no idea what to expect. Yeah. And when I was finished, I, my mind was kind of... <laughs> It was left somewhat empty. I thought that this was it, and you know, I, it just—it wasn't what I had expected. No. But um, certainly, I never doubted the church at the time, and I and I no. and I continued to go back to the temple. We, yeah. My wife and I always held temple recommends. Wow. So interesting. Yeah. Matter of fact, our last one's just barely expired. So. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think ours went in 2012, but or 13 or something. But mm -hmm. uh, did you uh, attend seminary? And uh huh. Did yeah. You? Yep. Granger High School. Attended seminary for four years. Wow, Granger. Yeah. Huh? yeah well, and Westlake Junior High because you go in ninth grade. You oh, know, okay. So, yeah. Yep. Oh, well, neat. So yeah. you uh, just feel like you had a testimony of the church and Joseph Smith? Oh, and? there was there was no question that I had a testimony. Yeah. There was no question. I mean, it, it's it was never a lack of question. I mean, there were points in my life where I knew that I would have died for my testimony and I would have died for the prophet Joseph. Yeah. Um, and I was proud of that, to yeah. stand by him and to stand by the church. You just knew the church was true. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You eventually get a chance to be a, a police officer, go to the police academy and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I am a police officer. Tell us a little officer. bit about your career as well, we're real quick. <laughs> well, I'm a, I am a police officer. I've been a police officer since 1997. I took a small break from full-time police work to serve in the Utah legislature. Yeah. Um, I yeah. served in the legislature for, for six years, well, almost six years. I, I uh, uh, served and represented a southwestern portion of Salt Lake County at the time because I lived in Harriman. Okay. And then in 2012, I ran for United States Congress. Yeah. And uh, took second. You know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice way of saying I lost. Yeah. Um, no, I, I ended up losing at convention. Um, but during that time, uh, I, I remained active in law enforcement. Yeah. So, and and that, active in the church the whole time? Fully active in the church, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fully active in the church. Um, never questioned it. Matter of fact, defended it. Uh, every chance I had, it, yeah. had a chance to defend, I would do that. Wow. Did you ever see the church's hand, now that you look back on things, the, the church's hand in legislature? That, yeah. As without a, saying too much, no, well, I guess, I can, you may not want to say. No, but. very very openly, <laughs> I can say this. Um, this did not affect my testimony. I want to make that very clear, and I want your viewers to understand this did not affect my testimony of the church. However, it was the first time that I 
it, I was kind of knocked back a little bit, and I realized that the church was not completely honest with the public. There was a, a immigration legislation going through the legislature, very controversial, and it passed through the legislature. And the headline uh, in one of the papers was, LDS Church denies involvement in this piece of legislation. Well, every legislator up there knew that the two church lobbyists, they were camped up there. They were camped up there 24-7 getting this thing passed. Wow. They, they were working with leadership the entire time. That bill would not have passed had they not pushed it. Uh, and talking to leadership, I talked to one member of leadership, and I said, how much of this bill has to do with what the church is doing? And he said, almost all of it. He says, in fact, I have to vote for it if it's going to fail. Okay, and so that I kind of took you back. It bit. took me back, but it, it, I never doubted my yeah. testimony yeah. even then. But yeah. it, So to be honest with you, the church stays a little bit away from the legislature somewhat until it's an issue that they care about, and then they will get it passed or they'll defeat a bill if they want to defeat it. And they know they've got yeah. some clout there. Absolutely. So after the second place, yeah. what happens in life? Well, I was hired in Nevada to take over as the uh, Nevada GOP, uh, as, uh, uh, with the Nevada GOP. Uh, I was going to be a fundraiser for them. Okay. The media loved, had a love affair with Carl Wimmer, and so everything I did, they, <laughs> they paid attention to, and so they had it on the paper. I'm going to Nevada. I get there, and it was a bait and switch. I get there, and I, they tell me, you're not hired. You don't have a job. The guy that hired you had no authority to hire oh, you. Dear. Even though they had sent me contract, they had sent me a contract. <laughs> they had sent me places to live. They had set me an office up. I get there and I had no job. Oh my goodness. We'd even bought a car to drive back and forth, a little, you know, teeny little car that gets good gas, gas mileage. mileage. But God works everything, uh, you know, to the good of those who love him, right? Yeah. And so you'll see that that car ended up being a good thing for us uh, <laughs> in the future. But I tell you, I was devastated. Having lost the congressional race, which I was supposed to win, every polling number showed that I was way ahead. <laughs> And then to lose the job in Nevada, I was devastated beyond belief. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly really wanted to die. I, I, I was at a for, low point of depression for beyond. For a person in the public eye, that's hard, isn't it, oh, I suppose? My life was being played out. Yeah. And I just prayed to God. I said, where do you want us? I said, God, I mean, you wanted me humbled. <laughs> okay. I, I'm telling you, when I was in the legislature, I was a very popular legislator. I was on the Glenn Beck TV show three or four times. I was very popular amongst conservative Republicans. I couldn't go anywhere without being recognized, and I loved it. I, I loved the adoration. God humbled me. <laughs> I was face down in the living room. I said, God, okay, you've humbled me. What do you want? Just I'm clay. Take me where you want me. And that path led to Gunnison, Utah, to where I... I've been working with uh, the police department there. I'm a police officer in Gunnison. Yeah. And I've had the opportunity to work with the youth who are struggling, uh, struggling youth who may be addicted to drugs or alcohol or come wow. from broken homes. And it's just been a, an amazing blessing to wow. be able to work with these kids. Kids who five years ago I would have had nothing to do with. Kids who I couldn't have cared less about, but I love them. Wow. God changed my heart. He did. Yes, he did. <laughs> What uh, what happened when you're down there on your face on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a humility that yeah. not everybody reaches, but a lot of no. people do that are at their wit's end or at their... God broke me. Yeah. He broke me, and uh, I, I did not see why I do now. But he brought me to a point where I, I knew that I could do nothing for myself. I had to rely on him and his grace and his goodness. Had you ever realized that as a Mormon? I, you know, I never thought of it. Yeah. Let's just say that. I never thought of it. Yeah. You kind of go through the motions, you know, your home teaching, your this, your that, and you're just doing your thing, going to the temple. And yeah. I, I never thought of it that really? way. I never thought of the relationship the way I do now. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, not, too, uh, not too long after we moved to Gunnison, I was on the computer and I read something that kind of piqued my interest. The, it was the idea that Joseph Smith had possibly gotten the idea for the Book of Mormon from the View of the Hebrews, a book called The View of the Hebrews, yeah. written by Ethan Smith. Yeah. Well, I had never heard that. And I didn't think anything of it until I saw a quote from B.H. Roberts that said, you know, that said if, 
he wrote a letter to the presidency that said, if, if we don't get a grasp on the <laughs> connection here, it's going to destroy the, youth, the faith of the youth of the church. Yeah. I thought, well, yeah, I want to I get a hold of this book. I'm strong in the faith. I'm not worried. I'll see what it has to say. So I wrote to a friend, Pastor Terry at uh, Calvary Chapel, who I had met uh, through politics, actually. Really? Terry Long? Yeah. yeah. And I said, uh, do you happen to have a copy of The View of the Hebrews? He said, sure. Uh, it'll be in the mail tomorrow. Oh. And so he must have known something was going on. He sent it, <laughs> but he sent another book. He oh. sent Grant Palmer's Insider View of Mormon Origins. Oh, that's dangerous. It was dangerous. <laughs> and I thought, well, this that's is so a, wonderful. I can read, read this book because it's written by a, a seminary teacher, institute you know, director, institute yeah. director. That's the way I felt. I started reading it, and immediately I got nauseous. I got sick. I got angry yeah. at Grant Palmer. Angry. I, it was two, like one, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm sitting in my chair and I'm reading this and I throw it on the ground. And I said, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I said, Grant Palmer, I don't know who you are and I don't know why you're trying to destroy the church that I love, yeah. but I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> Everything you said is a lie. You're deceived. You're, you're, you're following Satan. I'm going to prove you wrong. And so I sought out to prove the things he was saying yeah, as incorrect. You started studying. I started to study. Um, I cannot even begin to describe the amount of pain. It was worse than death. I had, I had a brother die in 2007 from cancer. Oh dear. The worst experience of my life. This rivaled it, and I hate to say that, but yeah. it, to have... It's so shocking. It was shocking. Yeah. Because you know the church is true. Yeah. You know it with 100%, with every fiber of your being, you know the church is true. <laughs> and to discover that it's not yeah. blows you away. I want, I've never wanted to wake up from a nightmare more in my life. Every morning I'd wake up and, I'd, and I'd, I'd was, I would think, was that fake? Was that? And then I'd realize, no. And it's no. on your mind constantly. Always, 24-7. Yeah. I mean, this is just so earth-shattering and so it is foundational. shattering yeah. devastating. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> my wife, I kind of kept things from her uh, at the time. And <laughs> Sounds familiar. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm out on the living room floor again. I'm, I'm like, God, okay, look, all I want is truth, okay? That's all I want. Just lead me to truth, please. And I'm begging him to lead me to truth. And, <laughs> and I was so frustrated with God because I knew that the truth was the LDS church was true, but everything God was showing me was proving it as, as a fraud. <laughs> and so one night, my wife, she says, what's wrong with you? Because I was pretty down, okay? Yeah. And so I laid it out to her, and I said, look, I keep asking God to show me truth. And he keeps showing me this other stuff. And all he does is keep showing me that the LDS church isn't true. <laughs> and she says, well, think about what you just said. Duh. <laughs> and it blew me away. I'm like, what? I'm like, there's no way. There is no way that LDS church is not true. But when I finally come to grips with that, it was, it was amazing. It was February 22nd of last year um, is when I consider my born again date. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people can't put a date on it. I can. February 22nd, I was, I was at a Jeremy Camp concert in downtown Salt Lake, and he started talking about living recklessly and, uh, and living for Jesus. Every bit of pain every bit of agony, every heartache, every bro piece of brokenness that I was feeling was replaced oh my goodness. in an instant with that feeling, that, 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 that peace that surpasses understanding. Isn't that awesome? My heart was changed, <laughs> who I was was changed, and I highlight Jeremiah 20 uh, verse 9 yeah. because it describes who I am now. And it, it, some people, they look at, they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> because I can't quit talking about Jesus. I cannot quit talking about what he has done for me in my life. And Jeremiah here in verse 9, he says, If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, <laughs> and I cannot. And that, oh, has, awesome. that has been me yeah. since, since February 22nd of 2013. I can't stop talking about the goodness of our great God. Isn't that awesome? And, uh, and my family came out with me. What my, was your wife's reaction to this? My, she was a good 
My well, I wife, mean, very, very with faith, you, very faithful. But yeah. my wife's very faithful, LDS, strong woman. The thing is, is that she was under a tremendous amount of pressure that a lot of LDS women are under. Yeah. You know, she was just burdened down. She was what she called a checklist Mormon, where she did her visiting teaching. She had to make sure the living room was clean before the visiting teachers come over. Yeah. You know, just trying to look like you have it all together. Yeah. Trying to look like you are the most clean, squeaky clean Mormon family walking down the sidewalk smiling hand in hand and the pressure on her and the burden was immense. She, uh, she, I told her, I said, I'm going to do some more research. I'm not ready to leave the church. And she says, go ahead. Okay, do your research. You're the spiritual leader. Oh, oh I'm like, great. Okay. Well, two weeks later, I come back to her and I said, we need to leave the church. And she's like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I, be so fast. I better research this myself. So, so did she start looking? You know what she started doing? What? She started reading the New, Te New Testament. She That's started, dangerous. She started reading the New Testament and in a way that she had never read it before. Oh my goodness. The, the, the idea of it filtering through the as translated correctly filter yeah. was gone. And she That's was, important. Yes. She was reading it as if it was all true because it yeah. is. Yeah. And she came to me and she says, these contradictions are amazing. These contradictions found in the New Testament with what you're taught to believe in the LDS Church are very powerful. When you remove the filter that says this is true as far as it's translated correctly. Yeah. Because as long as that filter is there, you accept the things that support your church and you disregard the things that don't support your church and it's a great book. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so Luckily, we have a wonderful, That's wonderful right. Bible church in uh, Ephraim, the Ephraim Church of the Bible, and it is a Bible-based, uh, God-fearing church. And that, I went out and I, I met with the pastor myself, and I got to tell you, for a Mormon, it was interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> because our, the pastor has a ponytail, okay. right? And I'm thinking, what in the world? You know, you're coming out of this white shirt, tie, yeah. clean shaven. I was elders quorum present for three years at one point. <laughs> white shirt, tie, clean shaven. Um, image again. Image. Yeah. Um, but Pastor Rodney is a beloved man, a great man, and a, a God-fearing. He loves Jesus. And uh, he teaches exegetically from the Bible, which is something yeah. you just don't get. You just don't get it as, as Latter Day Saint. No. Well, did you? Is it, you notice the difference in the praising and the and the worshiping, right? The songs <laughs> and everything. <laughs> it, it is remarkably different. Yeah. Remarkably different. Um, when they say it is all about Jesus, it is all about Jesus, um, and the difference is stunning because we're no longer. The testimonies are no longer in an institution or in people. It's between. It's in God. In God. It's in Jesus. Yeah. And that is so remarkably different that I can't even describe how different how it do, is. I, I know you can't because I can't either. How do we explain this to the Latter-day Saint who says, I believe in Christ. Right. I believe in uh, Christ, I guess. Yeah, I have a personal, re I talked to a lot of LDS people who said, I have that personal relationship. I said, I thought I did too. Okay. Yeah, I, I wish they would understand that, that we both thought we did. Right. That's the thing is, is they, they all think something's wrong with you and something yeah. was wrong with me. Something yeah. was wrong with our walk in Mormonism. Right. It wasn't. There was nothing wrong. No. We were as faithful as, as any strong, faithful yeah. Mormon. The only thing is that we started to actually research. And have our eyes opened. Yes, praise God. And once that happens, it's just... There's no going back. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's some movies that just are stunning that are remarkable like that. I mean, The Village, which uh, M. Night Shyamalan, The Village, uh, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it because it's, it's just like coming out of the, the shell of Mormonism yeah. because it is the only truth you know. Sadly, so many people that leave Mormonism, they become agnostic or atheist. Because as I was ta as I was coming out, I talked to some of my Mormon oh. friends, uh, and and I said, if the church were not true, would you want to know? And a lot of them said no. A lot of them said no. They wouldn't want to know. And then I got a lot of this. I got yes, I would want to know, but wouldn't change what I did. I would still go to that church. Wow. But their relationship is with the church, yes, not with Jesus. That's right. Yeah, that's right. 
That is absolutely right. Now, before we started the interview tonight, we were talking kind of informally, and we just talked about being shocked and how we're shocked where we're at. Yes. Did yes. You, I mean, you're just shocked, aren't you? Beyond belief. I am about 18 months away from graduating from Liberty University, which is the largest Christian university in the country, in the world, in fact. A BA in, uh, in theology. In theology. I'm getting a degree in theology, and I, I would like to continue on until I get uh, either a master's in theology or an, an MDiv, yeah. a master's in divinity. Um, my heart is, my heart belongs to Jesus. It's an amazing thing. Um, he is the most important thing in my life. More important than anything else, there is nothing that trumps my relationship with Jesus. And the peace and the, 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 the wonderful, the, the, it's so fantastic. I want others to know that and to feel yeah. that. And so my heart is really in evangelism. I, I would like to spread the, the word of Jesus. And maybe even to Mormons, yeah. perhaps. Yes. But don't you feel like you're a better husband? And a better father. <laughs> I, I, you should ask my wife. Uh, there is it is night and day difference. I mean, it's not like you when you say Christ is everything to me. Oh. That just puts your wife in a do totally different perspective yes, because it, you love her so much as, more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is absolutely correct because it, because of what Christ did to me, I now exude this love to other people yeah. that that I, I want to love them because of what's been done for me. Yeah. And uh, yes, um, it has affected our family and the way I am as a father, the way I am as a husband, remarkably. Um, I used, I am not ashamed to admit, I, I had struggled at one point in my adult life with pornography. I think many men have, but yeah. many men won't talk about it openly. Yeah. That sin was washed away. Christ took that, God took that sin from my life. It's not even a temptation anymore. Praise God, Praise God for that. Yeah. Um, I was prone to fits of rage once in a while, um, where I would just, uh, not abusive, but I would get very angry and even break things if I was in, in a fit of rage. By That's the way, you were a world, a four-time world, what, what were you? A four-time world powerlifting champion, yes, I, I was. Um, I competed <laughs> for many years in bench press competitions and, and... So you had the strength to be angry. <laughs> yeah, and I could, I could break things, that's for sure. My best bench press was just under 600 pounds at one point. Oh my goodness. Um, and, and so I, I broke my back a few years back kind of and ended the career. kind of ended the powerlifting career. But, but you're explaining a Jesus that I never understood as a Mormon, but the Mormons would say, well, it's your fault. You didn't understand. He was oh, there. The amount of times I've been told that. I don't, I mean, we've interviewed so many people that have, what would you say to that? I, I, I have been told that. Yeah. And what I tell people, the, the only thing I can tell them is, you just don't know what you don't know. And, and I hate to say that to you. But, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. They just simply don't know what they don't know. I have tasted the finest things that Mormonism has to offer, that the LDS Church has to offer. I'm talking the pinnacle, e the eternal marriage ceilings in the temple, the blessings, the blessings from there. And I have tasted the best of what a Christian walk with Jesus is. And it is, you can't even begin to compare the two. It is literally dirty rags compared to the grace of Christ. That's the whole thing, isn't That's it? it. That, that's it. And I just wish people could understand that, but they're so scared and they, people that start to peek, you know, behind the curtain to look, they get scared. And that's if they even peek at all because... Yeah. They don't I, even want to peek. I don't, I don't, I feel, I don't uh, begrudge them at all because I know what it's like. I would have done the same thing. Absolutely. The yeah. church is true and the church is true and the church is true, period. Yeah, that's it. But it's not. <laughs> That's the only thing. It's like thing. somebody said the Titanic was a great ship except for one little thing, you know. It's saying. <laughs> That's right. It's exactly right. Oh, Carl. Well, th and our time's just zoomed by. <laughs> so you've had some influence. I don't even think we covered how you, uh, you were broken, but how you became Christian. You started going to the Ephraim Church, and yeah. that opened your eyes, and that... It, you know, we did, I didn't even go to the Ephraim Church until... Uh, after I was born again, okay. until that uh, Jeremy Camp concert yeah. experience, that's when I decided we're going to go to another church, and that's when I went and met with the pastor, yeah. 
yeah. and we, we, we haven't looked back since. Yeah. Our kids thrive in church. My kids ask us to read the Bible. We were, we were <laughs> what I think is a typical... I don't typical, think you get that. No, in. we were a typical family where family prayer was hit and miss, family home evening hit and miss, we talked Bible about stu- or Book of Mormon study. You right. never read the Bible. We talked but. about God on Sunday, and then the rest of the week we just kind of lived as good as we could. Yeah. Jesus is a constant in our home from morning until night. There's praise music going on. My kids are singing about Jesus. <laughs> you know, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. I mean, my kids are singing. We're up camping, and my daughter says, "Dad, read us some Bible stories." And so I whip out the Bible. It is a life change for our entire family that has been. That is so incredible. He, he took a broken life and made it just beautiful. And uh, it's been a, an amazing thing. And we've had people reaching out because I was a public figure. Yeah. And because my conversion from Mormonism to Christianity was front page of the Salt Lake Tribune. Yeah, I was on the Tribune. I read <laughs> front, that. Front page. Yeah. Oh, man. I wanted well, to show you there in Ephraim. And I everything. wanted to hide under a rock then. This was coming out because I was so scared. But it does wonderful things to those who might be thinking, I'm yes. alone out here. This yes. is, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good about the temple. I'm not feeling good about polygamy and masonry and Book of Abraham now right. has just come out stuff. And, 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 the, and now the they get a confirmation brides. that maybe, hey. I mean, I was so deep into the belief of the church. I, didn't even, I, did, I did not even know Joseph Smith was a polygamist. I didn't either. Okay, okay, I did not I, know and that. let alone that he had married 14 year olds and other men's wives, you know. I had no clue none. about that. But those are historical facts. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it, it's been an well, amazing thing. We've had, got pe- a, I'm sorry, go ahead. we've had people reaching out to us yeah. and we've been helping people come along uh, in whatever way they can. Oh, well, so. you've got about 30 seconds now. What, what would you say to the Latter day Saints? I mean, you kind of shared, but. Truth is not found in an institution. Truth is found in Jesus. And His Word. And, huh? his, and, and the Bible. <laughs> yeah. His Word. Just at, beg God to show you the truth. Beg Him to show you the truth and be brave enough to accept it. I really like what you said about removing the filter. Yeah. Uh, we had a guest on a couple of weeks ago that had written a book, and John Wallace, and his second chapter in his book is is the validity of the value of the Bible. Amen. He didn't even want to move into Mormonism, the good news or the bad news, until he had tried to filter right. away that problem with the Bible. Exactly right. Carl, thanks so much. Thank you. What Mr. a delight. Appreciate you. I Thank appreciate you. you and good luck in all you're doing. <laughs> God bless you. Thank with you. With your degrees and stuff. I hope that all works out for you. And whatever God leads, I'm sure you'll be a great uh, study for the Mormons. Good night.